Hey bud, how you doing? Welcome to Herp Corner. Here we are in the Paramaribo Swamp Forests of Suriname. And boy is the weather nice. Good thing I filmed this in the warmer season. Wink. <clears throat> uh, where we'll be talking about the paradoxical frog, also known as the paradox frog, the swimming frog, in Portuguese, sapu paradoxal, I hope that's correct, uh, and pseudis paradoxa. Uh, pretty easy to remember as far as scientific names go. Uh, now, you might be wondering, what's so paradoxical about these little guys? Uh, they seem like standard little men upon first glance, I guess depending on which one of them catches your glance first. Uh, what I, of course, mean by that is the fact that, well, okay, so, uh, there's a lot of different interpretations of this frog throughout his metamorphosis. On a surface level, they're known to slowly shrink as they age into adulthood. Uh, you might have seen this image floating across the internet before, uh, under the ID of a bullfrog tadpole. That is not true! Uh, bullfrog, or American frog. American bullfrog tadpoles specifically are darker in color with a light belly. Paradoxical tadpoles, however, are more similar to this coloration. Uh, I know a lot of tadpoles look basically the same. It's hard to ID them, but you know. Uh, either way, paradoxical frog tadpoles start out at around 11 inches in length before growing, or shrinking I should say, to a size of around 2 inches. Think about that for a second. That's more than 5 times smaller that's like being born five foot five and growing up to be two foot five. Uh, but anyway, a lot of different people have different interpretations of the species depending on how far into the metamorphosis they are. Uh, for instance, here's a weird and wild creatures card for this species. Looks pretty weird, right? <laughs> I mean, not to dunk on WAWC or anything. Uh, I know you guys became bankrupt in 2013, but please sponsor me. I'd love I I've loved your stuff since I was baby. Uh, most interpretations of the species are weirdly inconsistent. Uh, so, are they ugly? Are they dumpy? Are they normal? Are they fish? We don't know. Um, well, what we do know is the fact that they start huge and end small. Kind of. Uh, seems like, uh, seems like that's their selling point, too. I mean, it's neat, don't get me wrong. Uh, but, however, uh, this is my favorite interpretation of them by far. Look at him. I'd kiss him. He's like a little baby. Uh, the IUCN Red List judges these tiny little gremlin monster sewage animals, complimentary, as least concern. Sigh of relief. Oh, shoot, wait, I wasn't supposed to read that out. Nice to finally say I can rest easy tonight. They're common in most of South America, including Venezuela, uh, Argentina, uh, Suriname, Colombia, and Brazil. Uh, there are minimal threats to their native population, uh, populations and are all around doing fairly well. A, ni a nice breath of fresh air for once. Uh, the paradoxical frog was discovered in 1758 by the lovely Carl Linnaeus. Love you, bud. He likely caught them where, they, they, where they'll typically hang out, in the flooded plains, rivers, banks, and swamps of South America. Most of their time is spent underwater. Uh, adults will eat worms, insects, and other frogs found around the banks. Tadpoles, like with most other species, will feed on algae and other aquatic plant matter. It's funny though, I can't tell whether these guys are nocturnal or diurnal since they're documented being active during both the day and night. So, I guess both? God, I wish that were me. Uh, turns out, they're also able to go to the bottom of their muddy waters and stir up the substrate to make a hide. Aquatic tunneling isn't super common. That's pretty cool. Any fellas with diabetes watching will appreciate this one. Here, uh, I'll just read it straight from the wiki since it summarizes it way better than I ever could. Uh, also, yes, I know using Wikipedia as a source is a sin. I don't care. They cite re reputable sources for this claim, so shh. Sh sh sh. Anyway, in March 2008, Scientists working from the universities of Ulster and United Arab Emirates re released findings of a study on Sudin 2, a skin compound which protects the paradoxical frog from infection. This work found that a synthetic version of this compound was able to stimulate the secretion of insulin in pancreatic cells under laboratory conditions without, toxi without to toxicity in the cells. Uh, as such, this synthetic medicine could be used in treatment of type 2 diabetes. Uh, so, yeah, if they ever find something in the way of that, uh, that could be huge. As for their evolutionary need to have abnormally big babies, that's been speculated for quite a while. It's important to note that they don't initially come out huge. Uh, no, that would be terribly impractical. Having gigantic eggs for babies that shrink in adulthood. Uh, no, no, <laughs> no, definitely not. 
Uh, they sit in the eggs as normal tadpole size, uh, usually like, I don't know, a few centimeters? They're tiny, tiny, you get it, they're tiny. Uh, but they grow much, much, much bigger as they break out of the spawn, which is weirdly green and frothy, by the way, uh, at least compared to most frog spawn. Uh, their big size as tadpoles was likely evolved to aid in them surviving the dangers of their environment. Uh, I mean, they're found in, nobody laugh when I say its name, Lake Titicaca. Okay. Uh, the biggest lake in South America. No doubt it's also a hot spot for aquatic predators and other dangerous things. The world's a scary place when you're a little gecko. There's also a different subspecies native to southern South America, uh, by Chile, that contradicts the pattern of which you can find these guys typically. Uh, some people say they're, a su they're the same species, uh, some don't. Um, I don't know. <laughs> All I know is this animal is stirring up quite the discourse in the frog community. Uh-oh, nobody write any callouts on anybody or anything. As far as care goes, I'd honestly recommend looking into care guides on the Pac-Man frog, just with more of an emphasis on aquatic portions. Uh, a muddy paludarium would do the trick, with a water pH level of around 8.5. That's the only real divergence, uh, however, in all other instances, they can live in similar conditions to a Pac-Man frog, uh, or other South American frog species. Really, outside of the tadpole part, they're pretty average, which, hey, I'm not complaining. Uh, frog guy's gonna cover frogs, I mean, come on now. Any real frog fans should like them all the same. Uh, as far as frogs go, though, uh, I'd, rank, I'd rank them as more of an intermediate species. Water cycling and getting specific conditions for the water section of the hypothetical enclosure could be quite the challenge. Not to mention how difficult caring for those tadpoles would be if you bred them. Uh, I don't even want to imagine that. Uh, but finding them captive bred is incredibly rare, if not completely unheard of. Uh, they're mostly primarily exported from South America, which... Thankfully hasn't hurt their native populations much, but still isn't the best, considering, you know, it could hurt them in the future. Um, so with that in mind, I'd only really recommend looking into getting these guys if you want to breed them. Which, I'm sorry, but I can't help you with that one. Look, look into Pac-Man frog gestation. Maybe... I don't know, consider it. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, now before we end off, here's two truths and a <laughs> lie about this species. Let's see if you were paying attention. A, the paradoxical frog shrinks to almost a quarter in size. B, the paradoxical frog can secrete a compound similar to insulin. And C, the paradoxical frog was at one point mis-ID'd as a bullfrog tadpole. Which one was the lie? Feel free to comment down below. And don't you dare cheat by waiting until the end for me to tell you, or this will be you. Uh-oh, stinky. I think it's time to wrap it up. As always, sources will be in the description. If you're interested in this topic, I'd recommend looking further into the husbandry or history. If you like what I do and know specific reptile and pivot and like to see me covered, put it in the comments. Chances are, if you've made it till the end, you're probably like me, hyperfixating like crazy on reptiles. Oh, well, if that's the case, then this is the perfect channel for you. Feel free to subscribe since I do these every other week. Like the video to support the channel. Have a good evening, morning, or afternoon. Thank you for listening, watching, whatever. And I'll see you next time. By the way, the lie was answer B. They do not secrete anything similar to insulin. However, what they do secrete can be stimulated to create insulin. insulin. Uh, get it? You get it. Anyway. Also, this is a short one. I hope you don't mind. Um, there, uh, the, uh, there's, there's not that much to say about the paradoxical frog. I love him. No, no, I love him. You know me. I love him. But, um... A little short of the, the, a little bit less to say about him than, than the, the, the Ulm. But I mean, you know, I could go on for hours and hours talking about that guy. You know the Ulm. Come on, you know the Ulm. Anyway, yeah, have, have a good rest of your night.